sure if you look it up in the, uh, in the Arabic, you're going to find some great big reverberations that go all the way up to the throne. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. The verse of the Quran is Surah Rahman. وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّةً And yes. the ones who fear God are given two paradises. Ah. Uh, now, some of the scholars like Imam Nathamia and many others have said, one Jannah is on earth because you're living according to divine law. Yes. The other agenda is when you go to yeah. Jannah. Yes. You know. Okay. Uh, and so this concept uh, exists within the Islamic tradition. Alhamdulillah. Uh, so we've got it. Okay. Yes. And yes. you see, I haven't studied traditionally, and I already know this. Yes. So how does that happen? Now, I don't answer the question. I just ask, I'm just putting it out there on the table so that you're religiously occupied, preoccupied, obsessive, compulsive religionist can see, hey, here's a white guy here who knows the truth. Mm -hmm. And I did not have a traditional education. Mm -hmm. I cannot speak Arabic. Okay? So, if you want to continue your path to hell, go right ahead, because I have my personal Janath. I know what it is. Okay, have I made that clear? Yes. Yes. So, okay, Bismillah. So, um, okay, so, so we're not bringing heaven on earth. Yes. There's so many Muslims who go and pray. Like, I had yes. a case today at mm -hmm. one of the other mosques. This brother, I know him, he prays five times mm -hmm. a day, but mm -hmm. he's not necessarily the best um, neighbor. Uh, is not able to offer small kindnesses uh, mm -hmm. as a neighbor in, in a Muslim neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, it just makes me wonder, like, how can that? I, I just don't get it. Mm. Uh, I, I get it. Oh, okay. I get it. And I'll try to explain it to you. And we're on the right track here. This is the right model. This is the right uh, archetype, you see. He is not bringing heaven on earth. He is practicing legalism, you see. And when you look in the legalist mirror, as long as everything is outwardly perfect, it's okay. That's kind of like what we do in the U.S. We make all these laws against uh, racism, but the yes. culture still has it. The more the laws, the more occupation, preoccupation with the laws, the less the spiritual essence. Okay, that is a principle. Okay, that is a very interesting. That's why now that connects with something very interesting because mm -hmm. of why the prophet said, "Don't ask too many questions," <laughs> because questions would lead to legalisms, and you want to yes. keep the spirit. Yes, so you it's have. All, you see, I do everything. I do all the prayers, the supererogatory prayers, da 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 da. And the commander said, "Go and stay with him, and then come back and talk to me." So, the man went, he stayed with this other fellow, I don't remember the names, please, but I remember the story. Yeah. And the man came back and he said, I still don't get it, why Allah would love this guy. He, sometimes he prays, he doesn't pray, he doesn't do anything extra, da 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 and uh, you know, so why does Allah love him? <laughs> why didn't you say Allah loves me? <laughs> See? And... Uh, the prophet looked at him very quietly and said, yes, I know. But what he does, he does faithfully. Mm. You see? And Allah loves faithfulness. So what we're talking about here is beyond legalism. Now, I'm not saying throw the Sharia out. I'm saying don't be don't be preoccupied with it because there's something more important. And what's more important are the two great commandments. The two great commandments is what Isa said. Mm. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your mind. In other words, it says what did the command is. Do your best for God. Mm. All right. And you give your best to God. This is the mm. tithe. Okay. Now. And then you love your neighbor as you love yourself. Mm. And what did you just refer to? Your neighbor's not loving you like he loves himself, is he? Mm. You see? 
So and when you're preoccupied with the Sharia, it interferes with your relationships with other people. And instead of developing and nurturing those relationships, you're destroying them by saying, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do this, do not, that, that. And before you know it, the kid's tearing his hair out, and he hates his Islam. Mm. But he won't admit it because it's too dangerous, you see. Because the Islam he's being given is not nurturing relationships. Mm. And it's not nurturing the community. It's, it's not, not Islam in its linguistic meaning. It doesn't, it doesn't have peace. There's no peace in it, you see. Yeah. So, okay, so that's at the microcosmic level, okay, of mm. divine order. The divine order, the boundaries are being uh, ignored. They're being breached. They're being um, uh, distorted, okay. <laughs> and um, this does not reflect, um, it does not reflect Asakina peace and security, it does mm. not bring Jana'a to earth individually. It brings a facsimile. And uh, people who are like this, they become the Pharisees and the Sadducees of Islam. Okay. And that's what we have now. You have a priestly order all throughout Islam, and they're Pharisees and they're Sadducees. And my God, if you don't speak out of, I, I, you know, I became an alim. I didn't do it myself. Allah put me there. <laughs> okay. So here I am. I'm sitting in this, uh, this school of schools in Malaysia, the top Islamic uh, graduate school in the land. You have top academics from all over the world. They're sitting in their professor's chair, an assistant professor's chair. And I'm a research fellow. Um, suddenly dropped my parachute into their mist. Hmm. Okay. And I understand the world better than they do. Mm. But I can't speak Arabic. And I have no traditional background. And I could barely pray correctly. You understand? Mm. So this didn't make any sense in their eyes. And so what happens is you get marginalized. Oh, well, he's not an Arab and he can't speak Arabic. And, you know, after all, what does he know? That, 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 that. You know, this is an attitude which is destroying the Ummah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, we're doing it at so many levels. It, <laughs> it's not the attitude that built up the Baghdad that was destroyed. There were good elements in the Baghdad that was destroyed. And it was, the, it was at the academic level, but not at the political level. Okay. So, um, this microcosmic uh, level is being destroyed by this attitude, by this Sadducee, by this Pharisaic attitude, okay? And it's destroying relationships. It's not building relationships up. It's destroying marriages, okay? You have husbands and wives nitpicking each other because they didn't do something according to Sharia. Well, this is nuts. It's crazy. It's psychotic, okay? And, and, you know, I, as a doctor, I can tell you that it's psychotic. It mm. borders on psychosis and it drives people mad. Okay. And further and further away from Jana'at. Well, it's Jana also, uh, isn't it kind of like uh, the Kabur, uh, pro, like uh, being arrogant because you're, nit you're nitpicking because you think you got it and the other person yeah. doesn't. I, it, they, yeah, there's pride and arrogance there. You no know, humility. You see, now I, I told you before, remember we had this little controversy.